History is the study of past events, particularly in human affairs, usually written as a chronological account. On today's episode of Ghana Midlets by the Goethe Institute Ghana, we are here to discuss when Ghanaian history meets futurism, the world of archiving. And with me today is Mr. Sifa Bruni, staff of Prad, Public Records and Archive Department. I am Dr. Sarah Dogbaji Osei. Um, I am a theatre artist of the Theatre Arts Department of the University of Ghana. I am also the CEO and Artistic Director of Lododo Art Foundation. I am a storyteller. Wow. And my name is Dr. Fafaliche, and I'll be your host for this episode. So zooming right in, um, please, I want to start with you. So what was your first encounter with Ghanaian stories? I grew up in the world of stories. I grew up in a community where, in a home, first of all, where we told stories in the evenings and as and when it became necessary. I, even up to the last end of my father's life, he will still tell me stories, even as a grown-up woman. Mm. Because for every issue, there was a story to tell, you know. So it was a life of stories. We told stories at home, we told stories in school, we told stories everywhere, you know. So my encounter with Ghanaian stories dates very far back. Before I realized that my name was Sarah and Fafali, <laughs> <laughs> I was already familiar with Ghanaian stories wow. and new folktale songs and all these kinds of things. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. sir. Well, I also grew up from a community where uh, any, anything we do, my own mind will narrate some kind of uh, yes. episode mm. to tell you how probably you do not have to cheat your fellow other person. So I also grew up from a, community, a, a, a home where we had some kind of stories linking to Kwekwanansi, not to be selfish in anything you do. In That's anything. how I also grew up. Mm -hmm. But then, do you remember the first um, storybook you've read that captured some of these stories? Yes, 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 I do. Um, you see, when I was in class one, my mother taught me to read and write every. Oh. Yes. And so we started with strong po mm. and plum <laughs> po. And these stories were great. David Okaklala for Nunchi. <laughs> so Verda, which is a giraffe. <laughs> you know? I wish I can translate that for you. I <laughs> you know, yeah, so I had a great time. Those were the kinds of books I started um, reading, even before I started reading Kofi is a Boy. Mm. Yes. So what were you? Mm -hmm. Do you remember any book at all when you started but reading? Reading? Well, well, not that, but I know some stories which... Uh, my, my old man told me, like when I say collecting the whole wisdom mm. and trying to climb a tree yes. and it's only bull. Mm. So it, I, I was informed from my infancy that wisdom does not reside in one person. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has to go uh, it comes from different, different, different kinds sources. sources. Yes. Mm. But have you seen any of those books around, the ones that you were Actually, introduced to? Actually, I'll tell you, I was so full of nostalgia the other day, I went around looking for it. But I didn't get it. But recently, about last year, was it? No, two years ago when my mother passed yeah. and we're clearing out the things, I found those books. Wow. I'm keeping them in <laughs> my archive <laughs> 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 now. I asked that particular question mm. because um, it's interesting to know that most of um, those who are a bit older, the older generation, have these stories that are within, like they've had, some are shut in their memories and just a little thing brings it out. But then we, the younger generation, probably haven't heard the stories at all. We don't even know the books you're talking about. Yes, I, I will tell you something. I went into storytelling because one day my son at three years said, Mama, tell me a story. Mm. I said, hey, good boy, <laughs> you caught me off guard. I couldn't <laughs> remember any stories to tell him from the top of my head. I couldn't remember it. I said, ah. But I could remember uh, 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 
Beauty and the Beast and yeah. the Red the Red Riding Hood and all these kinds of mm -hmm. uh, 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 Cinderella the and all these stories. Things. Yes. So I said to myself, why am I going to tell these stories to my son? Because this is a very important question he has asked me. Tell me a story. It addresses his self-identity, his creative listening, the dexterity with language, because our stories are language specific. Yeah. You know, the, the, the beauty of the language, the songs, the voice texture with which these songs are sung. I mean, the totality of who he is was what he had asked me. Yeah. And I was surprised I couldn't remember any stories. And hmm. I knew that it was time to usher my son into the holding of our archival, our ancestral archive. Yeah. And it was not for me to tell him that I cannot find the key. So this is why I went into storytelling. I started collecting stories. I, I made it a project. Go from community to community. Because if we don't pass it on to them, oh. what will he tell his children? Yeah. And that's, so that brings me to my next question. We've heard various accounts of how independence happened. We all know at least there's one that is constant that runs through. But one would wonder, what about the individual stories, people who experienced independence in a different way? Probably that day that Kwame Nkrumah was declaring, someone was getting a broken heart somewhere. Mm -hmm. But we don't hear those stories because nobody wrote about it. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask you, what are some of the books that you've seen around? Or what do you think has happened that we've not been able to gather some of these stories? Because I'm sure at that time, your father, as you were saying, would have stories about that day, he would did. have stories he about did. that time. So what happened? Why couldn't they capture these stories for us? Uh, I am sure that the stories have been captured in various shapes and forms, not okay. necessarily only in writing. Mm. The writing is excellent, but not necessarily in, only in writing. Because he told me things about my own day. I mean, what is my own day? Mm. That they will go from Siem to uh, Kofodia and they will sing, <laughs> and they walk through cocoa farms and he, I mean like, it was interesting reliving those moments for me. Yeah. You know, that was an account. But if you have to come to um, documenting them in books, then the only accounts I can talk about are the writings of Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. Those are the only actual books, apart from the F.K. Boas and the uh, 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 Dubois Hens that talked about West African um, history and things like that. When it comes to a personal perspective of things, I think Kwame Nkrumah's writings are the ones that um, um, uh, fill in that gap That's for me. Yes. Okay. So do you have anything to add? Well, I would say, like you mentioned, that a lot of... Uh, a lot, we've lost a lot of our uh, archival material because some of them were oral, mm -hmm. which we couldn't present. That time recording mm -hmm. was not very effective. Mm -hmm. And writing too was even limited to the educated elite. But we had a lot of people who experiences we they, they failed to record. Mm -hmm. Or we couldn't put them on other tapes That's or other things. Mm -hmm. okay. So to, to read the archives, because, uh, to me as an archivist, we see that we've lost a lot. But comes the future, we are hoping to have a lot of, at this time, things or recordings and other things to preserve. preserve. But I would tell you that history has a way of preserving itself. Yes, we may have lost it, but there's a way in which, how do I explain it? In the world of art, there is that which I, I, I explain as the artist is a receptacle. Mm. We receive messages from another realm and bring it to bear on this, in, in this realm. And so there's a way in which artists have brought back some of these memories. Mm. These memories Do you yeah. see? Mm. So all is not completely lost, lost mm. because the custodians of the stories are always speaking. Yeah. But then the question is, who is listening? <laughs> <laughs> to add to what Madam is saying, I, I yeah. agree 100% with sometimes even our, our way we dress. Sometimes you see that you look at some pictures, currently some people try to dress the old way. Yes. Yeah. The way they cut their hair and other things. Yes. You go and look at some pictures, you see, ah, currently the young men are also copying those yes. old types of dressing 
and haircut. Yes. I agree. Yeah. I really, really agree I will tell you that. a specific example. Um, there was an issue um, in a village where I was doing storytelling and there was conflict between two factions about a piece of land. And then there was a young man who is like 23. He did something and the elders of the community sat up. He went and took uh, what the Akans call Menkenshon, the, the, the middle part of the palm front, the new shoot, mm. the soft one. He went and plucked that, wove it in a certain way and wore it as a hat and went to the opposing uh, family Sorry. and said, if you claim ownership of the land, meet me on the land. Mm. The elders withheld the young people and said, you see what he has done? The elders and the ancestors are with him. Because that thing he did is what our ancestors used to do to declare war. Wow. But this boy is 23. There hasn't been war fought anywhere. Yeah. So where did he get that from? Information or her act. So that means it was passed down to exactly. him. Yeah, yeah. So that brings me to the next question. So Sarah Sheridan said, without archives, many stories of real people would be lost. And along with those stories, vital clues that allow us to reflect and interpret our lives today. So based on your answer so far, mm -hmm. whose responsibility is it to collate our history? Family, uh, national, the stakeholders, government, who? Everybody. It is everybody's responsibility. It is every community's responsibility to keep their histories. And how do we do this? We keep the histories in the artworks that we do. Hmm. I've paused so that we digest that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are 100% right. I, I wrote something on it. Yes. When Amma Tedu writes a. Uh, uh, Anawa, Anawa, Anawa. Anawa. <laughs> she makes a lot of historical references in that story. She doesn't mm. set up to create an archive. Mm. But any time you perform that play, you relive you that yeah. experience. That reminds me of the marriage of Anansewa. Exactly. Anansewa. <laughs> you bring back the culture. the culture. You bring back the history. And that, that is archive. <laughs> yes, that is an archive. That's the beautiful thing about us. Our archives are lived. Mm. Our archives are sung, our archives are danced. Dance. You know, for um, uh, 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 there's a the drum. Uh, yeah, the folklore. Yeah, the yeah, folklore. Yeah, yes, yeah. they are okay. all archives. In fact, when you go to an archive, the repository is usually artistic in nature, isn't it? Yeah. Those artistic pieces are themselves archives. archives. So it's in the way we dance, the way we drum. Yes. Bashi na bagle. Go di vuvu na do bashi na bagle. It's a bad rhythm. I know. <laughs> yeah. But it's telling you something. Yeah. Go da hunda hunda homa nyaga. It is drum language, but it is speaking to the history. Yeah. Our festivals are all archives. Yes. It tells the fate of fashion, the whole wet chuchu. Yes, everything. They are all archives. They are all archives. archives. So we have to, apart from doing the uh, conventional archiving, archives. we have to practice our art and we have to steep our art in our culture. Hmm. The artworks that we do must be representative of us. They must be adorned with Ghanaianness. And by doing that, we keep the histories and the archives active that's interesting so you you just reminded me of a story um mm -hmm. i lived in akachi for wow. i think seven or eight years mm -hmm. and there used to be this rumor it's not verified that the reason why the town is called akachi is because you know in ever aka means charcoal, charcoal. Mm -hmm. and chi means like off, off. So there was this little rumor that the reason why the place was called Akachi, like the first person who discovered the land, started a fire and the fire went off. So he said, ah, Akalachi, the mm. Akachi. Mm. Now, who verifies history? Because this is someone's claim that that is how come the town was named Akachi. Mm -hmm. But who is there to, who verifies it? Do we have historians in Ghana? I think we do. We, we do. And who are they? Eventually, they, they are the, 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 the actors. 
there are the actors in it. You, you, are you done? Yes. No, no, you continue. Yes, you see, in our society today, yeah. we are practicing two genres of knowledge bodies. Okay. The literate and the oral. Both of them are progressing in the Ghanaian society. We are not a completely literate society yes. and we are not completely an oral society. So most of the histories you're looking for, they have been kept in the repository of the oral. Hmm. And isn't that problematic because it becomes hearsay? Or? You see, you're, you're yeah, or thinking of it with a very literate mind. Right, yes. hmm. <laughs> that is the right. thing. So we have oral history. Yes, we have yeah. oral histories. History. There's the history that Okonfuanoche was not an Akan, he's an Everman. Yeah. Y you understand? Mm. But it is in the oral tradition. I haven't seen it written anywhere yet. But they have a clear cut chronology of what happened and what it is. And it is being passed on. I'll tell you something. I went to my hometown. And I spoke to them about, well, I asked them one question. The people sat down and sang for four hours. Singing, four hours. What are they singing? They are recounting my ancestry. They are recounting my ancestry up to the point where my father married my mother and all the things that happened around the time, and this singing is not rehearsed. Yeah. Mm. It is not rehearsed. Mm, they are not rehearsed. So it is poetry, but it is sung. Mm. And they tell me that the histories are known to everybody. So from constant singing, the next generation picks it up. But who ensures that there's someone, like there's that flow of knowledge? Because from all that you've said, which I can totally understand, and I think I've seen it also happen when I go back to my hometown. You see, most of those, like most of us in this generation are constantly moving towards the urban areas. Mm -hmm. And for instance, here in Accra, rarely would you find a community sitting down these days and stories being shared and songs being sung. Normally, it's when you go for funerals. And even that, most people are not having the funerals back in their hometown. Now they're bringing it to the urban communities, places they've lived for a while. They're getting buried there. So we sort of lose that. So who ensures that these things are passed on? Is it that it would always stay in the rural areas and the communities where we meet the chiefs? How do we preserve I, 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 I those will, ones? I will explain. Um, sorry. Oh, you, you continue. <laughs> you continue. <laughs> your, your contribution. I, you see, the, 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 the way you have just said it now. Yes, please. The people who validate the, the histories are the custodians of the culture. Mm. You see? Yeah. They are the ones who actually validate the history. If the stories are told, they are told selectively. Mm. Um, I'm not seeing the wisdom part. Yes. Depending on whom you're telling it to and why you're telling it, you will tell it and leave this detail or that detail. But then the owners of the story, they know the full story. But they also appreciate the fact that this is your creative um, uh, narration, narration of or the innovation. story. Mm -hmm. But you cannot say that the pot did not break. Yes. So what the essence of yeah. the story is told. There was something else you said that I wanted to address and I, I, it has escaped me. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I asked that, how do we preserve it? Because mm. some are here in the, um, like for me, for instance, the last time I went to my hometown was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so, as you described, when you get to Anglo yes, and it's culture is present you know this is culture you the see rhythms it rhythms of life yes. change yes so then the question is must i always go there before i get to know the history no, can't must. i sit in a car and pick a book or go to a national library and just pick it and see okay these are all folk tales those are all folklore but this is history this is something that has been verified yes you see 
The history that you're seeking to verify is one thing. The beauty of the oral yeah. is that it is a lived experience. Mm. You see, mm. it is a lived experience where everybody now develops body memory mm. of what that experience is. Mm. So the, the, the written record is great. Now, the young people of today who live in Accra, who are consistently and seemingly, seemingly, operating with <laughs> seemingly, being detached from their culture, I will tell you from my work in Lododo Art that there is this quest. The soul is yearning to go back to itself. Mm. Acculturation is getting to a peak. And when that happens, we will go back to who we are. This is who we are and why. Everybody, so anytime, you see, the way the thing is, what, seem, what appears to be... Um, foreign or uh, foreign dominated or foreign... Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, the, there's a word I'm looking for. Uh, Whatever appears to be... Not the regular one, what's the word? Indoctrination. Or is uh, it? No, not indoctrination. Um, um, it's novel. Um, novel is a bad word. <laughs> it is... Um, ideal? Not ideal. Something that stands out. What is the word? It has escaped me. Mm. Is Unique is a, is a better one. Mm. Yes, okay. So anything that appears to be unique yeah. is attractive, mm. especially to young people. You understand? Mm. Now, the acculturation that has come to sweep all of us off our feet is now becoming the ordinary. True. And then the traditional that we had left behind is now the unique. When I remember the word, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's now the unique. Unique thing. water. The, yes, so that now is attracting attention. Have you forgotten that recently there was a, 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 a whole campaign on Eat Ghana Rice? Yeah. It starts from somewhere. Yes. We are now seeking to be ourselves. Mm. Mm. I like that. Even, yes, please. Uh, uh, to add to what Madame is saying, in, recently it has come that most, especially ladies, they go with their traditional name mm -hmm. rather than you know taking a uh, foreign or Christian name as mm. their name. If you have witnessed some of them, is now uh, uh, Fafali. Yes, <laughs> and then that will be your name, not any English name attached. I've come okay. across so many ladies or um, people denouncing even English name as their. Okay. That is also because a certain generation has come. Okay. Mm. That has appreciation for That it. has a certain appreciation. Have you noticed that it used to be a Ghanaian thing, a, a story, an ever naming system where we name our children according to what happened around the earth? Yes. 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 So there's a reason why you're called Amenuva. <laughs> there's a reason why you're called Fafali. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why somebody is called Kuomaja. Mm. There's a reason why somebody is called Odrecha. Mm. Odrecha. You, know, mm. <laughs> you know, these are names of my relation. Hello. Mm. <laughs> you know, so there's a reason why it is like that. Yeah. Now, have you noticed that their cans are also taking it? Yes, mm. yes. Inshira, mm, Inshira. Adum, Adum, yes. Ayeyi, mm. Nyamebeye. Nyamebeye. Mm. Mm. Draw more. I recently oh, met a lady called Osofumame. Ah. <laughs> ah. We thank God for her. So, so, uh -huh. <laughs> you see, so we are slowly, gradually, turned, we are in the curve. Mm. Yes. We're coming back. back. Have you noticed that a lot of people are growing natural hair now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. It is a quest for being authentic. Authentic. Wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, you've talked about oral history. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the written history as well. So let's look at the written aspects. What qualifies as an archival material? The archival material, we archivists, we are, you know, our aim is to preserve document which has enduring value. Mm -hmm. Every archivist, you ensure that the document you are preserving will have a future use. Mm -hmm. That's why probably uh, your, building your building permit and other things you preserve it so far as your building is there. Yes. 
and your uh, your birth certificate should be there with you all your your year uh, as you are alive. Okay. But well, it depends. There are certain documents probably when you finish using it, you can dispose of it. And it depends on institutions what they pre they will have value that this document should be there as long as. I think you understand me. Yes, Depending I on individual mm -hmm. and but how you, the value you attach to that document. Mm -hmm. My question to that is, so how do you determine that this has enduring value? Because you use the example of the birth certificate. I think everybody knows they have to keep it because it's requested usually when you're going to apply for another ID card, a national ID card. But all the other types of archival materials, for instance, if we decide to archive the marriage of Anansewa, as a book, what makes you know that this is something that should be preserved because it has an enduring value? Who determines that? I don't know if you get my question. Yes, I, I, I explain further, please. Okay, so I have this board. If I'm bringing it to you to archive, what requirements do I have to meet? We will assess, for example, probably you are from Goethe Institute. Yeah, okay. and you are bringing me in a document. Mm -hmm. And it hinges on the, the, the functions of Goethe Institute. Okay. So I see it as a, your major fu uh, function or your core duty. Okay. So I'll preserve it in the name of Goethe Institute. But okay. probably if you are bringing me something, a duplicate receipt of something, I would think that oh, this thing, even though if it will be needed, it will be needed for a while, and therefore, as maybe time expires, we can you know, dispose of it. We can dispose and of it. Every document has a, a time value. But we have some documents which you have to preserve. For example, uh, Ghana, our history started when the bond of 1844 was signed. Yeah. And that document, it is in the archives. It is in the archives. Because there's no way we are going to, the white or the, the, uh, the participant will be there to sign again. But we have to keep that document to signify that probably somewhere those uh, colonial days, there was understanding between the colonial people and the chiefs around Cape Coast mm -hmm. to come into agreement to you know, uh, relinquish some of their traditional powers to the white to rule them. Okay. That's it. And for example, as I, I'm willing to add, Kwame Nkrumah, at the time of independence, the British Queen handed over an uh, independent charter mm -hmm. to signify that you, the people of Ghana, today, you are free forever. It was not only by a map, but an independent charter. So such a document, you yourself will see within it that you have to keep it yes. for the uh, unborn generation to come and see. Yeah. So I cover material, you assess it, the value of the records. So this is why it is important for every family, everybody to keep it's their own, own archives. archives. Because at the national level, there will be a sifting. And then mm. at the regional level, there will, there will be a, a sifting. sifting. Yes. And then at the family level, level. you know, so it's like that. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. I, 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 I have an archive of one material. <laughs> <laughs> your pictures can be your archive. Your, 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 your written material. You, you know, when I was a first year student in the university, yeah. one of my lecturers, uh, uh, Yao Asari, God bless his soul, is passed. Yao Asari wrote a play and called it The Choice. Mm. He performed, he, he directed the piece as he was writing it. And he never published it. He performed it only once, and he didn't do it. After that, he left the National Theatre. GBC recorded the, the piece. But you see, at the time they recorded it, the sound was poor. So they could never play it. Oh, wow. So when I was going to do my PhD, I thought that was one of the plays I wanted to talk about. So I went to look for the piece. I got the archival material from GBC, GBC. which is the production. But there was portion, there were portions of it that the sound was so bad I couldn't hear it. I needed the written text. Yeah. Yawasari never published the text. Hmm. I went, this we're talking about 92. I went to the performers at that time. Damn. I traced each and every one of them. And they gave me handwritten documents. Yawasari's handwriting That's great. Mm. Wow. of the piece. piece. Mm. And so I put the piece together. I now married the, uh, the handwritten and the performance Perform. Perform. and managed to bring it together. So now I have a complete 
script of that performance. Now, that handwritten material, I can never throw it away. Yes. No. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Sarakai. I'm that even one. interested in reading it. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, yeah. yeah. Yes. Personally, it's, I adore it. I, anytime I look at it, wow, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm. And I put it back. You know, and then the performers have made their notes on mm. it, and I feel like that's gold. That's, yes, and it's authentic. What, yes. what is the original? Listen. Yes, mm. handwritten. He didn't type it. Those days mm. we didn't have computers and it was the typewriter, and he didn't type mm. it. He hand wrote it. Wow. Wow. The, the for for Akash, anything you can cast for any, your own pictures, your, your yes. infancy. You yes. love some of them. Yes. Hey, is oh, it me uh, who was true. like this? <laughs> Probably you even show it to your husband yes. or your, your kids that, yes. oh, this was fine when I we were in school. I was a fine girl before. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple of materials. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, say, this question is to you. What are the processes or the steps that we go through when we come to your office? office. The National Archives is a public institution. And we are located at uh, Adabraka, opposite the Holy Trinity Cathedral. Anybody wishing to come there, you are free to come any working hours from Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. And we have a search room where if you are looking for any a cover material, you come and then register. The register is to make sure that the documents we have in our archives are unique so that nobody comes to temper or maybe mischievously take something. So we try to register you by getting an information on your background. Mm. And basically, the people who are maybe madam who are researchers, mm -hmm. uh, that can, uh, academia, mm -hmm. and then people from uh, the court who are searching on their family properties. and other public officers, you come there, you are free to assess any document. After getting your ID and you giving us information that you have somebody of a sign mm -hmm. and not of any mischief, you we have a founding aid list, which we have, you know, listed every document in our custody or repository with a number. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking on, for document on probably a court records, you may give us the year. Then we go through the list of documents that came from the court that year. Mm -hmm. And if you find it, we go and bring it to you. And then you go through and look at wow. and do your own search. Okay. Wow. After which you return the document back. And the time period, probably by 3.30, we stop giving up document to document. people. Because we'll be preparing to close. Okay. So basically, that is our, our way of you know, serving the people. We don't charge anything. And if you want to make any photocopy of any document, so far as they are archival materials, they are for public use, you can make them. And keep and your then, own and records. And keep it. Okay. Whilst we keep the original document. That's what we do. So if I'm bringing um, if, a document to you, If you, you what also do I do? bring a document, that is a sessioning of a document. So many family people like uh, uh, Kinsley, uh, Kinsley Hayford and family, some of them, Saba family, they have brought their family documents for us to keep and for researchers. Mm. So if you have any document, you bring it, we give you a receipt, record all those things, and then give you a copy, a, a, a copy of all the documents you have, then we are searching them. So we have, we have documents ranging from colonial records, court records, newspaper collections, administrative records, post-independent records, and the maps, and, uh, maps and plans. And then we have other family uh, members who donate their family uh, documents or other things to the archive for archiving. Mm. Okay. So these are the types of documents we have in the, our repository. So what's the oldest documents you our, have? The, our documents some date back 1844. Ah, I wasn't 18, even born then. Uh, <laughs> none of us, I was even, <laughs> <laughs> I was even fathers, not born then. So our documents some dated back 1844. Okay. Up to today, we have a lot of them. Some of them I mean, from the, the government. I remember at Raka, I have to let them share some. Uh, this uh, uh, House of Commons, they brought some, because we were under the colonial government, they brought some of their uh, parliamentary proceedings. To, uh, mm, and so, so I made them, because now we have our parliament is mature too. We wanted to study the, 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 uh, the British, this thing. But now we are mature, so yes, those things are. are not relevant to us. I actually us. sent one of my assistants to come to you. Because I was doing a research in spectator. 
spectator, spectator and mirror mm. on buildings. Uh, so uh, that we look at how the building structures have transformed. Transformed, yeah. Uh, mm. The architectural design mm. and also fashion. Did you find it? Yes, there. I did. Ah, mm. then you have a lot of decades. Oh, we have a lot of Do, do you have funds for this? Unfortunately, the funds are not forthcoming. <laughs> but for, uh, somewhere about three years ago, the government started giving a document to, uh, to scan some of them. So scanning has been going on for some time. Now. Okay, mm. so that means you are trying to, to turn to it into digital, uh, to digitize yeah, it. Yeah, okay, so. okay. Mm. Is it like in the movies? I don't know if how many of us have watched movies where they go, when they go into the archives, they wear those gloves, they have to make sure their hands are neat before they could touch old documents. Yeah, Do yes. you have something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, that is the requirement. You have to be neat. Probably you don't go and eat and come and touch. You know, the oil will attract yeah. in, uh, ants and the insects. Oh, wow. So you may be sure if you are working on any document, you need to even have gloves. Okay. Mm. okay. But do you it have? Is, it's recommended for all who handle uh, books. Yes, mm. yes, yes. That's mm. why most libraries have do not eat, do not drink water no. there. Yeah, yes. Mm. But do you have story books archived? We have a library. Okay. A, but for books, we don't store books. Okay. The document we have, they are always single. Mm. Most of them are single document. Okay. Except where probably some of them may be in a, like the voter leak. We have uh, all the, the, the commissions and this, they are there in their numbers. Oh. But most of the, the documents are single, single document. Oh, okay. Which, if it is lost or is damaged, it's yeah, difficult to. So that means most of the documents are non fiction? No, no, no they, are, they are non fiction. Wow. Are non -fiction. So I can't archive the marriage of Anansawa? No, no, you, you, can, you can archive it. Or maybe when you go to uh, Legon yes, Library, it is, yes. it, is, it is there. If you come to the theater mm. arts department, they, they archive it. It's mm. there. Yes. We mm. have a shelf that is for only plays written by students. Student, yes. So wow. over the years, all the, is a big shelf. Mm. All, but these days, we are doing soft copy. Uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> because in no time, we will need extra buildings. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, buildings, place upon place upon place, and plenty. Yes, Which are the libraries? Uh, the Performing Arts Library. Library. Ah, okay. Yeah. I've come to the African African, African Studies. African Studies. Yes, we uh, go to African Studies Library. Uh, they, they are there. Okay. The lady there is my friend. Af uh, uh, <laughs> is it uh, a free or so? Some lady. Uh, He's in charge of the uh, Kwame Koma African uh, yes, Library. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So I have another question though. Um, would your office be seen as the national library since it has all of these important documents uh, 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 with li library has it, uh, uh, functions and the archives are this function okay. we are two we are two different, are two different. Uh, i'm asking this because you know in africa there's the obasanjo presidential library and there's the sabo mbeki presidential yeah, library. library and most of these libraries mm. have the this archived materials mm. so do we have something like that or yours is strictly an archiving office it's archiving strictly archiving mm. do you think okay. we need something like that in ghana yes a national library that has all the archived documents maybe mm. in one Yes. In yeah. one office or one floor, then maybe the next we have these, like all the documents you have at the performing at, like collating or bringing all together instead of oh, having single, oh, single, single, single um, libraries or unique libraries scattered across. Do we have one that when someone walks in and knows that I can get everything I need from A to Z? Do you no, think no, we that, need that something like that? We do, we do need it. Yes, yes, yes. I went because, to um, Toronto University. They have a library. Oh, I've forgotten what the library is. It's a huge building. It's a monumental building Golden. in the whole landscape. Wow. And it has 12 floors. Ah, that's high. my dream. So, <laughs> you know, you can get lost. Mm. You can get lost on, in that library. Mm. 12 floors. And it's, uh, it's like a city. Wow. I've forgotten what the library is called. Th th then it has combined both probably it's like Robots Library. Mm. Probably it has combined a library and archive together. I'm not oh. sure if they have archives. Mm. I went there for library. Library, uh, library oh, purpose. Okay. purpose. So I don't know if they have uh, any archives. Okay. So earlier mm -hmm. on, you brought something up that I am very, very interested in. Mm -hmm. Family history. Mm -hmm. So the question is, should we start having family archives? And if so, what kind of, what advice would you give to the public? In terms of family history, what should, should they start preserving? Because in your case, you talked about the stories that your dad told you. So 
I'm hopeful that you started archiving some of I them. Will that tell you the, the history that you haven't even heard yet. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, you got to listen. <laughs> because um, I am Paul Dogbaji. The Dogbaji is that I, I, I am related to. Mm. They are in Devima. There are others in Bakbak. I I, I link to the Devima. But my father's father, his father, mm. is from Osudoku. So how did we become Dogbaji's when we should have been called animes? That is a history. That has been passed on to you. Yes. I'm not sure if I should say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, as you were saying it, I started remembering my dad's own history. Yes. So um, my, my surname actually is supposed to be Ayeji. Mm -hmm. Then my dad and his sibling decided that, oh, we want to separates from the IEGs, mm -hmm. so they form their which is the Che. Mm -hmm. So whenever, like, whilst we were growing up, you tell you, oh, you actually belong to the IEG family. Mm -hmm. We just coined our own name so that we stand <laughs> out and be unique. Yeah. But m the reason why I bring the family history up is, you know, some people, especially those in the foreign countries, some of the foreign countries, have what they call the family Bible or the family history, where when you open, you see you're able to trace your ancestry. So then you see grandfather this is this, then they draw those pictures. Mm -hmm. They even go to the extent of putting pictures there. Mm -hmm. So how do you advise that um, parents should start keeping these kind of information so that um, nothing happens, like nobody forgets. They, the children can go back to it even when the father or the mother is not there. Yeah, keeping them is one thing. They should also tell their children. Mm. They should tell their children so that they begin to live it. You see, this, this, there are two things. Because I'm a, I'm a performing artist, yeah. I am very much concerned with the lively part, mm. the active part of the history. Mm. Uh -huh. So they should tell their, their, their children and then do the recording as well. It's fine. We should stop you know, shunning our background and shelving the stories of our background. However humble, that is who we are. We should tell these stories because they inform the future. If we don't tell these stories, if we don't... The telling of the story is what makes it alive. Because if you put it in a book and put it on the shelf, it can stay there for ages and nobody will read it. True. But then it becomes an archival material. One day, one day, one day, somebody will find it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah. But we should also tell it and live the live. history. Our history is very much a part of our everyday life. Hmm. That is why we name our fabrics and all these things hmm. that we, we wear. And that is who we are. And we shouldn't kill that aspect of it. But if we keep that aspect alive, Hopefully, the documentation aspect will also grow because that's the telling and living aspect is very vibrant. It's more vibrant right now because if I'm telling a story, everybody will gather and listen to it. True. If I write a story, I'm struggling to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Mm. Yes. I agree. So let's, let's do both. Both, yes. Let's do both. Let's do the, the book. For the, the book the, people, sorry, let's the do physical, the life, yes, yes. yes. But in both ways, the most important thing we are seeking to achieve is to make the information accessible. accessible yes. I okay. think that's what archives, archives do, yes. to archives, make the information yeah. accessible. accessible. And, and as artists, when we create, whatever we are creating, it should be rooted in these archival materials. That is when our works assume a Ghanaian flavor. Yeah. It is good to do all the Western things <laughs> and all this. I mean, yeah, it's true. It is good to do them. We thank God for it. But we should also understand that globalization is Westernization. Yes. Yes. Mm. Because they are setting the standards for this. and we are not considered in the equation. Mm. Even their, is their culture. The, we thank God mm. for it. It's a great culture, but it's theirs, not ours. Mm. You see? So, so we have we, to stand up for our We culture. have yes. to stand up for ourselves. Let our arts speak for us. Mm. 
let our arts be extensions of who we are. Hmm, I agree. Mm -hmm. So, sir, um, what do you see your office? What role do you see your office playing in the next five years? Oh, we have a, a, a very great potential. You see, uh, archives or the Pratt, our full name is Public Records and Archives Administration Department. Mm -hmm. We manage all the public institutions, the records mm -hmm. they create. And you know, finally, the ones we think they are very important, we bring them to archives. Okay. And with digitization, it's enhancing our work now. Okay. Now, a lot of things we can do it on the internet and other things. Yes. So we, we, we hope that with uh, uh, IT developing, our work is also enhanced. And we have future fast record and information and that the, the, the right information base and other things has passed. Yeah. It's okay. giving people to have access to all information. And we are the, the custodians of the information. Yes. So That's we have, nice. Mm. That's nice. That means we have a future. Mm. We do. Mm. <laughs> but I wanted, to ask, I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask, I wanted to to Madame when he's talking that we should act with the thing. I, I, I have within me that um, uh, it is, I've not, but it is within my plan that I will go to uh, the lead Rollins house uh, family to advise them to keep the man's that house, the late our former president who passed, mm. to yes. keep the history of the man, even his where he lives. It is for us to keep to that place, it. to preserve it for the next generation. You might have seen him. Yeah. Somebody, our our time will come. No, the pen can only. But if his house is preserved, yes. where he lives, where he eats, and is preserved like we that we done for uh, Du Bois Center. Mm -hmm. Mm. It will speak by itself. Yes. Just it by is, seeing yes. it, you'll be able to So it is my story. plan that I will go and appeal to the family to preserve the history of the man where he lives before he passes on to eternity. Okay. She should, like Madame said, it's, we should act the thing, not only by writing it in books. Yeah. If you preserve seen. his pictures, everything, the uniform you wear, everything, and say, oh, this is where he even slept or he okay. slept, but it will speak by itself. Hmm. Yes, these are it's that, that, yes. materials. So that if you read the book, you can go and see it yes. live. Isn't it interesting that we've kept um, Elmina the castle, the slave mm -hmm. castle? We've preserved some of these things as forms of, as forms of history, mm -hmm. but these things that are pertaining to ourselves, like our people, we don't really do that because I don't think some of us know where Kwame Nkrumah's house was. Yes. Or whether he in, even in has the, a house. Uh, Those uh, things have not been preserved. But yeah. you go to the slave castle, you see everything has been kept intact. Why do you think that happened? I like that question. <laughs> <laughs> so far, okay, he lives in the plaster yeah. house, yes. which I think they are present. Like, he, yeah, he, he, he was living in the plaster, plaster house. house. But do yeah. we have a museum that has collected most of these things and kept as a form of history? No, as of the plaster house, I think people continue to live there, so I'm not sure that the place was preserved. And even now that the place has been changed yes, right mm. now, mm. I think that aspect has been wiped well, out. Yes, yes, part mm. of my history has been wiped out there yes, as well, mm. because yeah. I used to live there. As wow. a child, if they crash those buildings and then when I drive past there, I just see the ghost. Hmm. It's, it's fine. I mean, there's but development and all these things. Yeah. But we should preserve. We should, we preserve, should preserve, preserve the. Sector. So how do we do? How do we preserve these kind of things, knowing that in in the future maybe probably that's going to happen. Our generation, when we are normal. But then, how do they preserve these things to say this thing existed here? Is it just going to be things that we see on the maps? That oh, this used to be here. Mm. How do we keep these kind of things mm. down, or even a resemblance of them, even if it's a miniature, something, a model mm, that model, has been yeah, done? Mm. Why do we even take these things to? Because we can't keep everything. Hmm. Uh, I just said that a part of my history has been wiped out. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. my personal history. Mm -hmm. But who cares about uh, a certain SW1 and where he lives? I mean, he's a faceless human being. In the scheme of things, <laughs> you know, so on the national scale, he doesn't matter. <laughs> but there were no, people but, but, who but, mattered on the national scale. There were people who they? mattered on, on the national scale. But you see, when Nkrumah was overthrown, we also know from the history that there was an effort to wipe out all the. Oh, his, yes, mm, okay. there was a history. His books were brought yeah. out and bent in an open mm. air. And his, his statue, we see that his. Was, uh, there was a, a degree that if you are found within it, but you are relating to Nkrumah, you should be arrested and put in prison. <laughs> All these things happen. Yeah. But then, you see, like uh, I said, history preserves itself. 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 Yes. So, all these things, you know, 
That's they good. Come and go, but the history will stay. I like we, the conversation we, so yes. far. And let me, we are, cause we are encouraging that the, the, the individual paramount, mm. like probably agnostic, can preserve their own. They can yes. also create their own. We started something, and because of funding and the change of leadership, we didn't go far. But we want to encourage all the paramounts, it's like, it may be paramounts, you, the chiefs will try to More preserve like most of their... A tribal the, yes. look. You Probably if it is uh, the teaching, the, the lineage, mm. the people who said, uh, all the, the people who have come to throne and other mm. things, their, their land uh, area and other things, they should mm. preserve those things. Yes. So we are encouraging uh, region, uh, uh, paramount is in, uh, mm. chief, uh, there, are, there are things that we are doing as Lodoto Art, as um, a group that is an NGO that is working towards the preservation of folklore. Mm -hmm. There are some subtleties of these things that we are doing to encourage people to preserve what is theirs. Uh -huh. okay. and I think uh, a, a bigger, on a bigger scale, the Asante Kingdom. He has a library. Li yes, library. they've been able to keep they, they these records. Mm -hmm. OK, yes. so um, time is far gone. Mm -hmm. It's pains me to end this particular session because mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot and I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> notice what time went. Um, final words. Um, in conclusion, from all that you said, what advice do you have to give, particularly to the viewers out there? How should they, what are some of the things that they should look at as family to preserve it? And you had a quote earlier on that I, I wish you read it yes. as we, um, before we come to him to give okay. us his final words. So um, my final words are to um, artists out there. We have a responsibility. We are the mouthpieces that bring life to the archival materials. So what we create, what we do, whatever we are doing, it is important to search. There's always an archival material that speaks to what you're addressing. And you can draw on these things. And I read this quote from um, Barbara Faslevi, who was writing about Ibsen and all these things, but we thank God for their life. <laughs> but the quote is very important. He says, if the new is to appeal to the people, it must also in a certain sense be old. It must not be invented, but rediscovered. It must not appear as something strange and incongruous in the conceptual range inherited by the people from their ancestors, and in which our national strength mainly resides. It must not be presented like some foreign utensil whose use is unfamiliar and which is inappropriate for familiar routine. It must be reproduced like some old family piece which we had forgotten but which we remember as soon as we set eyes upon it because all kinds of memories are linked with it. Memories which, so to speak, lay within us fermenting quietly and uncertainly until the poet, the artist, the songwriter came along and put words, tune, rhythm to them. I hope we find inspiration in this. Thank you. Sir, your final words? My final is that archives is the responsibility of everybody individually. The fact that you have some documents, some uh, uh, pictures or anything relating to your life, your institution, or probably where you even grew up, you can keep those things for future use. Mm -hmm. If they are something you feel you can also delegate, uh, bring it to the National Archives, you are, you are encouraged to bring those documents for us to preserve for the society. So this is my way that the archives, everybody should be of his own, should be an activist of his own. And if the document you are having is something for the greater society, you can bring it to the National Archives for us to keep for future reference. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, hello, lovely viewers. It's been a very fun and educative session. In signing out, I'll leave you with this quote by Taryn Simon, where he said, Archives exist because there's something that can't necessarily be articulated. Something is said in the gaps between all the information. It is up to you and I to preserve Ghanaian history. And it is also up to you and I to preserve our family history. 
So tell the stories to your children. Tell those stories to your grandchildren. Repeat it. Make sure they keep it as memories and they also keep telling others. Until I see you next time, please stay safe. Bye. <laughs>